Mr. President, thank you for allowing my country's participation in this meeting. I thank the Secretary General Antonio Guterres for his briefing, and I acknowledge the presence of Under Secretary General Martin Griffiths. Mr. President, on the World Humanitarian Day last week, the Secretary General provided emphasis to the situation in my country. The government of Ethiopia appreciates the good faith engagement by the Secretary General. We appreciate the Secretary General call for ending the suffering of the Ethiopian people. This same objective will continue to drive the efforts of the government of Ethiopia, as was the case in the past nine months following the treasonous and unforgettable attack against the Northern Command of the Ethiopian National Defense Force by TPLF. Excellencies, in previous discussion on the situation of my country, I tried to give a broader perspective on the problem where we are facing. The current state of affairs in Ethiopia did not transpire overnight. They were in the making long before the TPLF unleashed attack on the Northern Command of the NDF in the dark hours of November 4. The genesis of the current conflict goes back at least three decades ago. Since 1991, TPLF maintained hegemonic control over the political, security, and economic life of the Ethiopian people. During this time, the TPLF faced resistance at every turn in all corners of Ethiopia. We must recall that it was sustained popular protest that dislodged the TPLF from the political power in 2018, assuring and a promising period of transition. TPLF was dispelled not only from power, but also from the hearts and minds of Ethiopian people due to non, the non-evolving and destructive ideology it seeks to preserve in the Ethiopian body politic. The people of Ethiopia outprogressed this political elite that stand vanguard for division over unity, oligarchy over equal opportunity, favoritism over merit. When it lost power, the TPLF retreated to Tigray, taking our people in Tigray as hostage, because as the saying goes, for those accustomed to privilege, equality feels like oppression. Still, despite numerous provocations, the Ethiopian government exercised maximum restraint until the group attacked and looted military barracks. Over the last nine months, the government sought to uphold the constitutional order. The TPLF refused to disarm and surrender to law enforcement authorities, doubling down on its destructive agenda. Mr. President, the unilateral humanitarian ceasefire declared in June and the subsequent withdrawal of the National Defense Force from Tigray was supposed to bring calm to the region and its people and provide space for the TPLF leadership to reconsider its ruinous course. Our plan was to allow a peaceful farming season in Tigray. It was supposed to pave the way for the uninhibited flow of humanitarian assistance for the people in need. If it went according to our plan and vision, the ceasefire would have allowed us to embark on rebuilding and reconstruction in the region, and the repair and reconnection of infrastructure and economic apparatus disrupted by the TPLF. Also, children in Tigray would have already begun preparation for the 2014 school year. It is 2014 in Ethiopia, it is 2020 in the Gregorian calendar that is set to begin next September. We had also wished for members of the TPLF that showed signals of willingness for peace to, success, to successfully advance their position and convince their peers to abide by the law and follow the path of peace. The government's commitment for peace was given 
no regard by the TPLF who called the ceasefire a joke, and also by members of the international community that tolerated, enabled, and condemned the group to follow its destructive path. The repeated plea for ceasefire was ignored, and we now have Ethiopian children in Tigray subjected to forced recruitment to serve as cannon fodders. We also see a distribution condition to parents giving away their children to war. Not only farmers in the Tigray region, but also those in adjacent Afar and Amhara region are now unable to farm their land, exposing them to the indignity of receiving aid to sustain their family. Hundreds of thousands in Afa and Amhar region are displaced and have sustained irreparable damage for their well-being. In absolute disregard for the well-being of people and in greedy pursuits, whatever is there to be acquired by creating mayhem on the very people it purports to stand for, TPLF blocked humanitarian aid. The group also engaged in formalization of fronts between internal and external actors bent on destabilizing the great nation that is Ethiopia. In this regard, we see a clear coordination between these internal treasonous elements and external actors from near and afar that have opened a multidimensional offensive to obstruct Ethiopia's right to use its natural resources. Mr. President, as to humanitarian assistance, the government of Ethiopia is fully cognizant of its obligation to its citizens. Sensationalization and politicization of our situation doesn't inform our response. We will continue to deliver on our obligation using all means and allocating all available resources. In this regard, the government of Ethiopia first is committed to hastening clearance of humanitarian convoys in fact, we are committed to reducing the number of checkpoints and to fast-track scanning process. We are working with partners to introduce modern scanning technology. Second, we'll continue to consider requests for humanitarian flights. World Food Program and the National Disaster Risk Management Commission are administrating their humanitarian flights with no impediment. Third, we'll continue to provide cash and manage it in a predictable and sustainable manner for all humanitarian agencies. Similarly, the resumption of public service requires peace and rule of law in Tigray. These essential services cannot be reconnected while the group that today, today killed 33 infrastructure operators and engineers, looted aid, diverted aid, and confiscated humanitarian convoys continues to persist on its destructive path of war. Mr. President, our goal is peace. Unfortunately, the TPLF is standing between Ethiopia and peace. TPLF is not the victim. It is a culprit. The people of Ethiopia, especially those in Afa, Amhara, and Tigray region are living under undeserved and insufferable conditions. We are started by everyone that appears to have been calling for peace and pressure the government for suspension of its law enforcement operation to later on tolerate and ratify through their reticence the expansion of violence and mayhem by the TPLF. Our plea to all with a sincere wish to help us realize peace is to put pressure on this lawless group to stop its criminal advance, to abandon preparation for combat and abide by the laws of the country. The group must also irrefutably delink itself from internal and external sponsors and affiliates. As to the international community, we ask you to remove the actual or perceived support emanating from your side that this group feeds off. It has to only comply with the requirements set by the government and free the people of Tigray from its egotistical grip. Absent compliance with the laws of the country, the government of Ethiopia will apply and any means necessary 
to ensure law and order. Regarding some of the unsubstantiated assertions we heard today, we call upon members of the Council to be cautious about facts and misinformation that has dominated the scene. There is no discrimination based on any ground, including ethnicity, religious, or any other background. We are not people with less moral. We are people of values. We survived for centuries through social cohesion. We built unity while honoring differences. The Ethiopian reform is all about how to strengthen our unity and live in harmony. The reform is not to learn to die through ethnic divisions, as has been professed, propagated, and implemented by TPLF for over 30 years. Mr. President, I would like to use this opportunity to express our gratitude for all of you who stood with us in times of our need. At the same time, we respectfully assert our sovereign integrity as an ancient, independent African country on a constant strive to overcome its challenges. In this regard, I would like to underscore the severe mentality that seeks to undermine the sovereign right and responsibility of states of their own security and well-being of their people have proven harmful in very many instances. We only hope the right lessons are learned. Evidently, Ethiopia is not a country that allows delegating the shaping of its future. But the international community has witnessed undue foreign pressure and interference is not appreciated by a soul in, that, in my country. And after the fact regret and admission of failure in foreign policy will not help. Hence, we call on everyone concerned to work with us. We are ready to work with all well-intentioned partners. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the permanent representative of Ethiopia for his statement. There are no more names inscribed on the list of speakers. I'll now adjourn the meeting so that the Council can continue its discussions on the subject in closed